I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my vlog of everyday life living in Latin America. I get a lot of questions from people who are looking at making career changes, which is pretty obvious because I deal a lot with people who are becoming expats, people who are relocating for the first time, people who may be looking towards a partial retirement, and they're wondering how they're going to make a career change that's going to make sense for them to be able to flexibly move away from their home country, but still maintain an income. So I talk to a lot of people who are making big life decisions about the future of their career and work online or investments or whatever. And an important one is when they're looking at making a career change, especially when you're looking at moving to a place like Nicaragua, where the internet is really good and the latency to the United States is very low, there's a tendency to look for very logical reasons into things, uh, career moves within the tech industry. So they're looking at IT, uh, information technology, they're looking at software, engineering and development. They may be looking at web design and similar, or maybe something with big data and data analysis. These are big fields now. And of course, business analysts and a lot of ancillary things that are very closely related to the IT field, such as project management, of course. So all of these things tend to be things that come up on the radar and people say, wow, these are jobs that can be done even better from abroad than locally, actually improve by being distant. Well, that's a big factor in deciding that those are big career moves. So how do you decide what's gonna be best for you? Well, the factor may surprise you. So we're gonna talk about that right after the pause. When it comes to career moves, it's easy. When we're looking forward to look at things like current certifications and hot new jobs that are popping up in the news, things that people are talking about and saying, well, these are likely to be the things that are gonna pay the best. These are the best, uh, most sought after careers in the future. And that's got some value to it. It's worth understanding where industries are going, what people are doing, what people are hiring. But there's some problems with that as well. One is very obvious that everyone else is seeing the same information. So when a new career pops up, everybody jumps on it. And if you're able to be one of those early adopters that can work out really well, but typically you put in a lot of work, take a lot of risk, and that risk is what may lead to some amount of reward. Once those early adopters are in, they've got the senior positions in most cases, they're writing the books, getting the big consulting gigs, and then the next round of people are just taking that bulk level of jobs that come after that. And they may do okay, but are they really going to do that much better than they would have in other career fields? It's hard to say. There's generally a bit of hiring. Now, areas that we see this happening in right now include a lot of data analysis. Big data has been for the last 10 years or so a really major space to be in. Of course, we're seeing AI and AI research really taking off. So we see more and more of those jobs, but we also see every single person who's been listless and without good direction jumping into those fields as well. Now we're talking tech. This applies to other places as well, but specifically in the tech field, it's a lot more obvious because these things pop up a lot more often. So what we see right now is, yeah, suddenly there's a million AI jobs and there's been a million uh, uh, big data jobs. But the problem is, the risk is, in these scenarios, what we see is everyone who is doing it is doing it out of a need for a career change or needing to find work because they're out of work instead of doing it because it's the thing that they're an expert in or have a lot of experience in. And so it becomes a uh, not good long-term approach to hiring or to retention or to wanting to stay in that field. So it's not necessarily actually that good. You end up with people who may have short-term uh, successes, but we're expecting there to be a lot of long-term challenges for people doing that and may hop onto the next big thing and put in a ton of work. And sometimes that pays off, but often it results in a lot of years of study and attempt to get in, a lot of failures and, and restarts uh, and, and lacking a stable base um, and without the career growth that you expect in other fields. So it's, it's rarely really, really beneficial. Now, if you see a new thing come out and it's the thing you are excited about, that's different. But by and large, those fields are just full of people who are doing it because they heard somewhere that it's the thing to do. And we see this outside of tech as well. We see it with uh, systems like teaching or nursing. These are a little bit different because they're not brand new fields, but they are fields that will often go mature, uh, have enough people and then lose uh, some amount of uh, flash and people stop going to school for them. And then there's a shortage, the salaries go up and there's industry promotion or government promotion or whatever that says, oh, these are great fields, you should go into this and then loads of people go into it. Then there's too many of whatever that field is and then they go through this cycle of swelling and then lean years uh, as they try to find a balance to have the right number of people in the field. For really large fields like that, that 
higher over massive areas, it's very hard for it to adjust quickly. We currently see this with veterinarian. They made some changes that caused a massive loss in the total number of veterinarian working hours per year. So there's a huge shortage of veterinarians in the United States. Now they want to have more. So we're at the leanest of the lean years. But as they try to ramp up, it takes like seven, eight years of promotion to get people through the system to start being added to the pool of veterinarians at the end. Uh, so there's a really large correction period. So we see the same things in tech. So what is the secret factor? How do you fix this so that you're not going through these cycles and subject to these risks? And I'm not saying that it's never a good decision to go on the next hot thing. If you have absolutely nothing else to work on, well, it's probably the best guidance you're going to find. Any amount of forward movement is good, right? As long as you're working, as long as you have a career path, as long as it's something that by learning this, you could apply it somewhere else. Right? Those are all really good things. So don't be afraid of trying something new, of learning something new, growing, of course. But when it comes to your career and your long-term career aspirations, the most important factor is finding. Yes, you do have to choose something that has a career, right? A lot of people are like, well, I'd love to just play video games all day long. Well, yeah, and everyone would. You know, I'd love to be a high-end food tester. I want to go around and review really nice restaurants. Sure, we would all love to do that. But in reality, you have to pick something that actually does have some amount of business applicability. But once you do that, once you find that list of things, then finding the thing that you're passionate about, the thing that you really care about, that's going to be the most important factor that you could possibly have when choosing a future career. You are not going to find yourself motivated or capable of learning and growing and advancing and maintaining over the long haul in an area where you're not passionate in the way that you can, where you are passionate. And let me give some examples. Maybe you want to go into something today and you're looking at AI or possibly systems administration. You say, well, AI is hot, systems administration is old. That's not cool. But systems administration, I enjoy. I like doing it. This AI stuff, yeah, I can do it, but I'm, I'm just not excited. Well, it doesn't take very much to see where there's lots of people competing for those new AI jobs. So you're unlikely to just magically get a position unless you're a super early adopter. You're going to be up against just millions and millions of people who are doing the same like I heard this or a teacher told me or my parents said to do this. Someone saw it on the news. If you've seen it on TV, it's too late. You've already missed those opportunities. So that is maybe not all that beneficial. And as you get into it, you're going to find that you're just not that excited. It's hard. It's work to learn more to get better. But if you're passionate about systems administration, just an example, then it's going to be easy to spend your time doing that at home, spending your spare time learning more. The time you spend learning will go faster. When you're passionate about something, you learn faster than when you're not. So one hour on each thing, one's going to be more valuable in how quickly you move forward. One you're going to have just in your mind more often. One of the things that I find is that um, you know, technology areas where I'm really passionate about it. I may fantasize about it when I'm doing other things. I'm eating food, I'm watching TV, I'm out for a walk, and I'm running through challenges in things that I'm interested in in my mind, finding new solutions to problems, thinking about uh, uh, better architectures, thinking about teaching people in the field, whatever. It, it's going to be there because you're passionate about it. And if you're not interested in something, you're going to get to the end of the workday and be like, okay, now I want to unload that and go think about my hobbies or think about something that I enjoy, go play video games because I don't really love, not that I hate, but I just don't really love the thing that I'm doing all day long. I'm not looking forward to thinking about it more later. Whereas if you really love what you do during the day, you're going to be excited to think about it later. Maybe you're able to focus on aspects of it that you enjoy more. Like, for example, in systems administration, you might at work have to do a lot of problem solving. And maybe that's not your favorite aspect. But with your free time, your brain is able to wander into systems automation and ways to improve things so you don't have to do as much problem solving. And then you can implement those things when you have an opportunity and you will become better and better in your field simply because of that passion. And beyond your actual field aspirations, in some cases, for example, you may be passionate about Windows administration and not Linux administration, but you say, but Linux pays more. I can make a higher salary by doing the same job in Linux than I can in Windows. But if you're not passionate, one, are you likely to learn it as well? Two, are you likely to get there as fast? Three, are you likely to move up the ranks inside that specific niche as quickly? And four, is the actual quality of life difference going to be significant enough to make the extra money actually valuable enough to justify not doing the thing you're passionate about? If you could make 90% as much doing Windows as Linux, but you love Windows and Linux you find boring, then probably you're going to be happier with your life, earning a little bit less 
if that even happens. You may earn quite a bit more simply because your passion drives you forward so much more, but you are able to uh, enjoy the rest of your life. Go home from work less stressed, more happy, look forward to going to work even more, not mind your commute, uh, get better at it, spend more time studying without being unhappy, just enjoy every bit of life so much more. and maybe even earn more. You don't know that you will earn less because that passion will make a massive difference in your overall earnings, especially as you move throughout your career and, and look at long-term advancement where uh, uh, you're moving into management positions, moving into thought positions, moving into mentoring positions. If you aren't passionate about something, those things are going to be harder and harder to achieve uh, because they really demand passion for someone to be good at them. But if you're passionate, it's going to be really easy and you're going to be really excited about moving into those positions, not just for the money, but for the actual work should generally engage you. There is a famous quote that says, if you do the thing that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And few things are as true. Often those classic phrases and statements are just false or make no sense when you actually dive into them. But this one really pays off. It's one of the most important lessons that I learned as a child is I really always had a number of fields that I was passionate about, things I was excited about, and I had to pick the one that I was most excited about. Now, if you're in a position like me where you love doing a number of different things, it can be really nice because you can combine having passion for something, really wanting to look into it, having a list of things you're excited about and saying, which one am I going to focus on? I can't decide. And then saying, okay, well, which one pays the best? Which one is the most likely to give me a career? I'll, I'll get excited even more about that one because it's things I love plus extra money. Well, great that you can layer that on top. I'm in a beautiful position of really enjoying a lot of things. If my career somehow turned into, well, you have to spend your full time making YouTube videos, I would be happy. If it turned into, behold, the only way you're going to make money is by being a model railroad modeler and you have to spend full time 40 hours a week doing model railroads, but it'll be a good career for you. I would be happy if I had to spend my time as a guide hiking places with people. As long as I was feeding my family and doing okay financially, not having to worry about where my next meal was coming from, I'd be happy doing those things. Give me the same or roughly the same salary. I could do a lot of really unrelated moves in my life and be absolutely happy. Now, some things I prefer more than others. Honestly, maybe a mix of things would be great. If I could just do mall railroading all day long where there's no stress or hiking places where there's no stress and I was getting that money, which is often a source of stress that you don't know where that money's coming from if you do those other fields, those are things I would really like to do. That would be super cool. But in reality, you do have to combine things with what is practical and what's going to pay within your scale. But once you are also passionate about those things, it's going to make your life really good. And I am lucky, like I said, there's a lot of things that actually make money beyond just the ones that don't that that I am able to do. And I do have to choose. And sometimes I actually do go back and forth between different careers that I really enjoy. And that is one of the areas that is a challenge for me that I'm actually spread too thin because I'm constantly bouncing around. But it's way better to have multiple money earning potentials that you're passionate about than to have none. Putting in some time to find your passion or to consider that when looking at things is super important. Now, I know not everyone is passionate about anything that can make them money, but look for the thing you're at least most, most passionate about. When you're looking at a range of options, look for that excitement. Well, this is something that, yeah, I'm good at and I'm kind of interested in. This is kind of interesting. Go that way. Don't purely look at this is what I was told is going to be a great future because those statements are nearly always wrong or misleading. Yeah, it's a great future if you already knew how to do it today, but is it going to be needed tomorrow? Well, you won't know that until you've been in the field for a year and really know it really well, and then it'll be too late. So going with the Hollywood says answer is almost always wrong. I'm not saying it's always wrong. I'm not saying that no one benefits from it, but the chances that by the time you've heard about it, that you're going to be the one that benefits from it, very low. And if you're doing something that's just like that, but old, well, when I was a kid, they used to tell me that this would be a great future. And then you find out that that career is long since gone. Also consider that. But of fields that are established, that, that, that have a known future or an expected future, look for your passion. It will be the thing that sets you free. You will enjoy your life, whether it is just your tweaking of your future within the tech field. If it's you making a career choice as a high schooler who's wondering what direction to take into the future and wherever you are in your career path, whether you're 13 or you're 60, start now. Don't wait. It doesn't matter how young you are. 
You don't wait to start your career. Start studying, testing, experimenting, treat it as a hobby, find work if you can, but start now. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay, medical doctors, that would be different, but within reasonable fields, just get started. And if you don't know how to get started, ask, leave a comment. Like, how would I do that for this? Someone is going to know, maybe me, maybe someone else, but there's almost always a way. And the sooner you get started, the sooner you can create that passion in yourself. Start with what passion you can, make more as you go. As you become good at something, you're likely to become more passionate about it. As you excel, it'll increase your passion. Passion is something you do control to some degree. Stoke that fire, right? Make yourself passionate about things. And uh, you know, if you're trying to find a way to uh, switch from working in an office to working abroad, still find the thing you're gonna be excited about. You're gonna be finding alternatives, right? Oh, I can't find an office job for this, but oh, I can find a job teaching it online. I can find, uh, I can start my own firm because I know it really well. I can uh, uh, speak at conferences. I can travel and do this. I can work for, there's so many options. When you become passionate, it'll take you in directions you didn't expect that are exciting because you're able to do it. Some of the most successful people I know, and in one case, completely built his career on passion didn't manage to build it on technical ability, didn't manage to, to build it on, on resume. He's so passionate about going to work and doing a good job that his passion without real direction carried him into a career teaching people about passion, right? It was a really amazing place to be and, and about being friendly at work. But this, this whole like taking it serious, passion really matters, right? And you want to work for an organization that encourages passion and hires passionate people. You work with other people who are passionate and you are going to find the most wonderful working environment because your goals are the same. You enjoy what you do. In my own company, my own history, 25 years ago, I went out with other people who were like me, who loved the work that we did. We did a number of different things. We were all polymaths in that way. We all were interested in this broad range of things. And we said, we can't find places that are as passionate as us. We can't find places that let us work and do the things we want to do as much. So we started our own firm based around being a great place to work with passionate people who also cared. And it has been such a blessing throughout my life that I've been able to constantly go to work and, and never be held back. I can always push as hard as I want, do what I'm passionate about, have a broad range of passionate uh, uh, activities within that business. And it has been so rewarding. Yes, from a career perspective, it's been great, but also from a personal development perspective where I just love the growth that I get to have every day because it's all things I'm excited about. Every day going to work, yeah, sometimes I kind of wish I didn't have to work that day, and some days I don't have to, but rarely, rarely do I ever have to do work that I don't actually enjoy. I would just be nice sometimes if I didn't have quite so much of it, or it was not a time crunch, or a customer wasn't breathing down my neck, but the actual work is always enjoyable. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel and the work that we do here, you can buy me a coffee at the link above at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and helps support everything we do here. If you would get down below and ask your questions or just say hi, uh, but that's much appreciated and helps promote the channel and everything we do. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, like, subscribe, share on social media, tell people about the show, and I will see all of you next time.